Hi, I'm Antoinette Toscano, author, transformational speaker, blogger at New Normal Big Life blog, and contributor at Cultures Magazine. I'm here with Jennifer Fino, model, dancer, entrepreneur, motivational speaker, television personality, and philanthropist in Los Angeles, USA. Jennifer is the reigning 2018 Miss Columbia, and on November 17th, she'll be competing in the 2018 Miss Latina Global Competition. Jennifer, bienvenidos, encantada de conocerte. Lo mismo, corazón. Muchísimas gracias por tenerme aquí. Es un orgullo mío. <laughs> I'm honored to be here. I'm so excited and just honored to be interviewed by Cultures Magazine. I'm so excited to be here. You look beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Coming from you, that's a true compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, like our readers, you're a person who's culturally uh, mobile, a global nomad, a third culture kid, a third culture adult. Tell us a little bit about your culturally fluid life. Yeah, absolutely. So I was born in Colombia, Bogota, Colombia, and I was nine when I moved to the States. Um, you know, luckily my parents decided to move us to the Bay Area, which as you guys know, Bay Area is like, they call it like a culture pot where you have so many different ethnicities and cultures and languages all immersed in one. I learned English really quickly and my journey of becoming this nine-year-old adult at a very young age and being responsible for so many things as my parents did not know the language really created the person who I am, just very uh, being able to connect with anybody from any type of different background or, you know, maybe someone who didn't speak the language, I would still communicate with them. Um, I think when you learn a new language and sometimes when you can't communicate from, you know, there was a lot of times where I didn't know how to speak English, so I couldn't, I had to like figure out, you know, you get a little bit with your with your body movement, you know, I have plenty of funny stories about that one, but you get to really learn a, a lot about body language. Um, I've learned how to speak Chinese in college, and so culture and languages is all very second nature to me. So why did you compete for the Miss Columbia 2018 title, the title that you currently hold? So the Miss Latina Global, it's, it's a huge honor to be in this competition. So I recently moved to LA about five months ago in pursuit of my modeling and dancing, which as you know, this is the place to be at if you want to you wanna make it. Um, and I went to the Lat Latinos in Business Awards, and I happened to meet Virgilia, the owner of uh, the pageant, Virgilia Productions. And it just so happened that she didn't have a Miss Columbia, and I was able to um, try out, and I was selected to represent my country. And it's a true honor to just be able to honor my country and have the support of the Colombian community um, behind me and just feel very supported and loved. That sounds lovely. What's the significance of the Miss Columbia Global Competition to the larger international Latin or Hispanic community? You know what? It's it's a very um, it's something really close to the Latin community. Pageantry is is viewed as something huge. Like everybody wants to be a part of it. They want to know that they know you. They want to know that they that you are the same real person as them. It represents truly the culture, the flag, the ambiance, the heart of the Latin community, um, really to the core. It's something that I've always dreamed of doing. And um, I my motto is anything is possible. And being able to be in this competition and competing on November 17th with everyone's love and support um, is truly, one, a dream come true, two, a challenge that I put myself in to know that I can accomplish it. And I know that accomplishing a goal like this will let everyone know that anything is possible. Sometimes we may not see, we may not be able to believe something you cannot see, but we have to trust and believe that we can achieve something that we cannot see, that might be something in our minds. Right. What, what are the contestants evaluated, being evaluated on during the competition? So mainly, to be honest with you, it's a conglomerate of body language. You get 30 seconds to speak your name, the country you're representing, and they took the Q&A out because this specific pageant with Virgilia Productions, it's Miss Latina Global, Mrs. Latina Global, Miss Teen uh, Global, hmm. Miss Asia USA, Miss Europe, so you have all of these different titles in one night. 
So they decide to take the Q&A out. So you're going to be based on the way that you connect with the judges, the way that you connect with the audience by your presence on stage in just 30 seconds of being able to say your name and your country. And what will be the, what will be your responsibilities when you win the competition? What kinds of things will you do as Miss Latina Global? Well, with Virgilia Productions and Virgilia's guidance, there's going to be many networking events that we're going to be a part of. I know tomorrow being Friday night, we're going to be a part of the Asian American Entrepreneur Awards. Mm -hmm. The delegates are going to be walking in a fashion show for this specific event. And the queens that are reigning this event are going to be some of the speakers and honored speakers. Um, so not only do you get to really up level your network with so many different high um, society um, events, but as well, you have a platform to do really any philanthropic work, which to me is going to give me a bigger platform to play on and uh, get other people involved um, to play bigger in life. <laughs> Some feminists might say that competitions like Miss America, Miss Europe, Miss Latina Global is misogynistic. It objectifies women by forcing women to compete on things like attractiveness. What would you say to that? You know what? I feel like that's so off, off that opinion is just not even true. Because if you know anything about pageants, and I could honestly tell you this because I'm in one now, um, you literally transform inside and out. When you look so, at a beauty pageant, we look at beauty. We're judging the woman, how she looks, how she walks, but really the presence and enthusiasm and energy that that individual is bringing on stage, it's total performance, it's total art. It's complete art and it's not easy. It's not easy to stand up there and be judged. I, any form of art it could be, the Picasso on the wall, you know, I feel like even a Picasso on the wall feels something. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's very important for, for really becoming the woman of your dreams. I know for me, I walk differently. I speak differently. I, I stand up, I show up in life in a more powerful way. Mm -hmm. um, beauty is just a very small portion of a pageant. And you feel like these uh, skills that you've learned in terms of presenting yourself, carrying yourself um, as a powerful woman are things that were enhanced in by preparing for the competition? Yes, 100%. Because, you know, for me, and I feel like a lot of women can relate to me, I was, I, growing up, um, I played a very masculine role within my family that I didn't realize that until probably this year. And so when you're in charge of things that maybe you should, shouldn't be in charge of, you, there's a sense of femininity that you lose. And I feel like this is a thing with women who are powerful businesswomen. There's nothing wrong with that. But we are also women, and we can also be feminine, and we can still be powerful by being feminine. And I feel like this pageant totally has brought out the, just the woman out of me even more. Uh, the way that I can just learn to be a little bit softer and just be me on a more authentic level. Um, so I'm very grateful for this experience. Do you think of yourself as a good feminist? I don't, you know, I don't like to label myself. I, I don't like labels. You know, there's times where, you know, I don't eat meat and I don't eat any fish, but I wouldn't label myself as vegan. Um, I know that I stand up for any woman at any corner of the world, whether it's they have an education or whether they don't, whether they work in the street, you know, I, I am all about women empowerment in any type of form. When you win the Miss Global competition, what would this mean for your life, your career, your philanthropy? Like I mentioned before, I feel like I know it's going to take things for me to the next level of calling into my life more things that I want, um, but really being able to serve on a higher, more purposeful way to the community. Um, you know, there's, I have a long list of goals that I want to accomplish. And I know that winning this title is going to allow me for a bigger network to be a part of, you know, building schools in Africa, creating more sustainable communities for our kids. Um, that's something that I'm really passionate about. And so I'm really excited. Tell us about your not-for-profit organization, the Golden Goddess Foundation. 
And so for those of you who don't know, I am the golden goddess. That's what I call myself. <laughs> I'm obsessed with gold, as you can see. But um, gold to me is art. And I consider myself a walking piece of art. And I created the Golden Goddess Foundation to help empower women of all ages. Um, last year, I had the opportunity to give away an autographed Nick Young basketball from the Warriors to Jamstown in Oakland, California. Hello, Sam Moses. We love you. Um, and we were able to give it away to, you know, they selected a young girl who had been working very, very uh, tough in the in this basketball season. So the Golden Goddess Foundation is really caters to confidence and women empowerment and um, building self-love and self-esteem, which I feel like all girls should really be taught that. Um, sometimes, you know, we don't learn it at our home. And that's something that I strive to do, to just teach love. Well, Jennifer, it has been such a pleasure getting to know you from the Cultures Magazine family. I'd love to wish you Buenos suertes in the Miss Latina Global Competition on November 17th. Thank you so much for interviewing me and I'm gonna carry you guys on stage on November 17th in Redondo Beach. I do have tickets available if you would like to come and support me. You can follow me on Instagram, Jennifer underscore Fino, FS and Frank, I-N-O, or on Facebook, same name. And I can't wait to share the success with you for the next coming months. Thank you so much.